Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're taking a look at a bunch of trades from today. Obviously with the deadline coming tomorrow, there have been plenty of trades today, the last few days. As we approach the March 3rd deadline, there's going to be more tomorrow, so be sure to come back, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know your comments down below on what your thoughts are on today's trades. But with that being said, we'll hop right on into it today with probably one of the bigger trades from today. This is all yesterday's trades. We've sort of refreshed. Probably one of the biggest trades we've seen so far with Tyler Bertuzzi going to the Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins, yep, go team. At 50% retained in exchange for a 2024 first round pick, top 10 protected pick, as well as a 2025 fourth round pick. So this deal, very, very, very interesting. For the Bruins, obviously, having yet another left winger to add to the list, Bertuzzi is a great, great pickup for them. Going to fit in quite nicely. I could see him playing, definitely he's going to play the second line. Uh, probably you could consider him third line to Marshawn got hurt tonight, so we'll see if that's sort of where he slots in for the next little while. But at the same time, Bertuzzi probably can play both sides if he has to. With Hall also just being announced that he's on the LTIR, expect it to be very similar to that of Nikita Kucherov, remember a few years back, where he was stuck in LTIR, got brought off. Everyone was really angry about it. Boston is learning from the best of the best. That's going to be very similar. There is no timetable for return as of this current moment, which means one thing, Hall's coming back for the playoffs. <clears throat> they don't have to worry about the cap. That is at least my hypothesis about it. I'd be very surprised if that isn't what ends up happening. But overall, this is a great trade for Boston. Detroit gets some picks back. Wasn't guaranteed Bertuzzi would have returned to Detroit. He is a UFA at the end of this year. But at the same time, good pickup for both sides. They get some value back with Detroit. Boston picks up a left winger, which they much need, especially right now, where we sort of can see Hall, yes, right now he's out. And... We don't know when he's going to come back. Obviously, Boston's not necessarily too concerned with the regular season right now. But when it comes postseason time, it gives Boston some flexibility if they want to move Hall up down the lineup. I sort of see it right now. Obviously, Hall has been moved down to the third line as of late as they want to keep that checkmate line together with Zaka, Krejci, and Pasternak. So we'll see if Bertuzzi even slots as low as the fourth line. I sort of see him play the offside. I expect it to be sort of a hall coil bertuzzi line. But at the same time, Bertuzzi, you can pretty much put him anywhere. He'll fit in right along. We also would not be surprised to see him on that top line alongside maybe like a Marshawn-Bergeron combo. Maybe stick him on the right side. Plenty of options for the Bruins to sort of work around it. Obviously, DeBrusque has been hot as of late. So it's going to be very interesting to see sort of how Boston decides to use a guy like Bertuzzi. Very versatile player. Can really play in any role you need him to. Going to be a physical threat. Going to be a goal-scoring threat. Going to be a two-way threat. Going to be pretty much all the tools Boston can hope for. So I'm very, very happy about this trade. I think it's a great deal for Boston. Good, good return for the Red Wings. I think it could have been a little bit better. But at the same time, in terms of the trade grade here, I'm going to give Boston two grades. The first one is going to be a B plus just for this year, If, in my opinion at least. I think it's a great deal for just this year. But at the same time, it can be upgraded to an A plus if Boston's able to re-sign Bertuzzi. Yes, he's a UFA at the end of the year. But at the same time, Bertuzzi, I expect, I expect him to return to Boston on a long-term deal. I think that's why Boston traded for him, gave up a first round pick in a year where they're not looking too great as of right now. We'll sort of see what that ends up happening there, but I, I'm a big fan of the pickup for Boston. This is sort of their final ride. You have, you kind of owe it to your veterans. You have Bergeron is most likely his last year. Krejci is most likely last year. So I'm curious to see sort of, how Boston goes about doing that if they make any more moves as we approach the 3 o'clock deadline. But at the same time, good deal for Boston, good deal for Detroit. And then the Red Wings, I didn't give them their trade grade yet. I'm going to give them a B plus, good value in return. But overall, Boston, in my opinion, are the winners of this trade by a slight margin. But both teams get what they're looking for. The next deal is between the Arizona Coyotes and the Columbus Blue Jackets. So, Jack Voracek. And a 2023 sixth round pick goes to Arizona and then Columbus receives John Gilly. So this deal, sort of a minor deal. It's more of a cap dump in terms of Columbus. I like the deal for Columbus. You only lose a six round pick. Get rid of a guy that's making 8.25. Not necessarily contributing to level of 8.25. But at the same time, Arizona picks up a guy. Yes, Arizona's worrying about how much money they have to pay out right now. But at the same time, you sort of can retain a bunch of cap in that sort of zone. And at the same time, 2023 six round pick on top of it 
John Gillies is not a concern for the Arizona Coyotes right now. I'm a bit, I really do like the deal for the Coyotes. I think they, I think they're the clear winners of this deal. The Blue Jackets just sort of had to get rid of shed some cap. I like the deal for them too. And they didn't give up too much in value. A six round pick, you could even argue, might be worth a guy like John Gillies. I'd argue more of like a seventh round selection, but at the same time, <clears throat> good deal for both sides here. Going to give them both a B plus with the slight edge to the Arizona Coyotes. I like their side of the deal a little bit better, but at the same time, Jacob Orchak is now an Arizona Coyote. So it's a good deal at both sides. And we'll move on along here to another one of the big deals from today with Michael Hutchinson, a 2025 seventh round pick going to Columbus in exchange for Jonathan Quick. Now this deal comes off the backs of yesterday's deal where we saw Gavrikov and Corpus Salo go to the LA Kings in exchange for Quick and a few and a few other picks. But at the same time, this deal is quite interesting to me as obviously we've heard yesterday, I sort of touched on it a little bit, that Jonathan Quick wanted out of where he was. And I think it's one of those things where it's, yeah, you can sort of understand what he's getting at and it makes sense. But at the same time, all of a sudden he sort of handcuffed the Blue Jackets and all credit to them. They made the deal. They got him out of there. He, they put him on a contending team like he wanted to. And in Vegas, this is one of those teams where he is going to thrive as there's no real competition as of right now. I think there's no reason why he can't take the starting spot a little bit of time still, I think, to sort of solidify himself. But at the same time, you have a competition there. Goaltenders that aren't necessarily proven up standards, obviously with Robin Lehner being injured right off the top of the year. Vegas's goaltending situation is wide open and it's really up for grabs for a guy like Jonathan Quick, who has struggled to sort of take his own spot. But we'll see sort of what goes on there. I like the deal uh, in terms of the Vegas Golden Knights. As for the Blue Jackets, sort of just got dealt a bad hand. Same time, you get you reap the rewards of the Corpus Silo Gavrikov deal. So at the same time, they just get an extra pick on top of it, as well as the Michael Hutchinson prospect. Not Hutchinson. Hutchinson isn't going to be too good for them. We've seen him sort of bounce around a bunch of teams. I don't see him necessarily being a key piece of the Blue Jackets in the future. However, that could change fairly quickly. I sort of see him as a backup role for, throughout his entire career if he decides to stay in Columbus, but that still remains to be seen. Trade grades here, going to give them a B both sides. The deal isn't necessarily the biggest. I think Vegas slight edge just because of the way they're looking at it. The Blue Jackets don't lose anything here. Jonathan Quick wasn't going to re-sign in Columbus, and he's certainly not going to play for Columbus. So at the same time, I think it's a good deal for Columbus. Just get him out of there, get him to a team that he wants to play for, like Vegas, get some some return for him, a guy like Michael Hutchinson, as well as his seventh-round pick. Picks are always important, especially for a rebuilding team. Like the Blue Jackets are sort of heading, but at the same time, good deal both sides. Move along, along here. Two, typically we don't touch on these deals with the future considerations. However, I do want to take one quick note here. Anders Bjork to the Chicago Blackhawks. This deal is one may, because of one reason. Bjork requested a trade. He wanted out of Buffalo. Remember back to Anders Bjork, where he comes from is from the Boston Bruins. In the Taylor Hall deal, we sort of touched on Bertuzzi earlier today, taking over Hall's role. Now, Buffalo trades away Bjork for nothing. So really what you're looking at from that deal is Bjork or sorry, you're looking at a second round pick in exchange for Taylor Hall and Curtis Lazar. Great deal for Boston. We look back on that deal, but once again, sort of taking a little bit of bias there. We won't touch too much on this trade. I like the pickup for Chicago. Plenty of upside for Bjork. Future considerations, I wish him the best of luck. It's going to be a hard task out in Buffalo, but at the same time, we've gone along here. The Edmonton Oilers with the last trade of the day here. We won't touch on the top one. Two is basically a prospect deal, not really important. Edmonton Oilers acquire Nick Bukestad as well as Cam Deneen in exchange for Michael Kesserling as well as the 2023 third round pick. Now, this deal is very, very interesting. And one of the reasons for this is with why the Edmonton Oilers retained 50%, or sorry, the Coyotes retained 50% salary on Nick Bukestad of a $900,000 contract. This is very interesting. This is one thing that I read about today. So the Oilers currently or had before this trade $458,000 in cap space. So that leaves them with $8,000 of cap space right now with the addition of Bukestad retained at 50% at 450,000. So they retain 8% or $8,000 still in cap space. Very, very interesting sort of move why they would have done that. Hats off, all credit to the Oilers for bolstering up, getting ready for 
what they hope to be a deep playoff run. Be curious to see how the Oilers fare this year. However, there's still plenty of plenty of hockey left. Plenty of trades to happen tomorrow. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who else gets moved in terms of trade grades for this one. I'm going to give probably a B plus for the Coyotes. I like the third round pick in exchange for Bukestad. That's really the deal. Deneen isn't too much of a, a big thing and Kesslerling isn't really going to make too much of an impact. You can sort of cancel out Kesslerling and Deneen and then it's really just Bukestad for a third. Bukestad, I think, is sort of underneath that. So I'm going to give the Oilers here a B, but I'll give the Coyotes a B plus. I think just sort of the 50% retained is sort of interesting. I like the way they did that. But at the end of the day, third round pick, still a fair amount of value for a guy like Buke said. Yes, he's going to help the team. But at the end of the day, I think the Oilers could have gotten a little bit cheaper. But with that being said, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you realize it, consider subscribing. Tell all your friends and comment down below your thoughts on the trades. Until next time, see ya.